So we've got a pretty tall order in front of us. We need to break down material and light into sort of simplified rules such that we can work from our imagination. And our end goal is to have realism when we want it and compositions that read well. Well, for the sake of the series, what I've decided to do is to break it up into sort of a checklist. And instead of thinking of a specific material like rock and how to render rock, we're going to talk about the various properties that belong to both rocks and other things. And it's these properties that we're going to try and understand. So then when we come across them in photos or in real life, then we can know what we're looking at. So I'm going to do a quick run through of how changing one variable can lead to a, a dramatically different result. And so we can start knowing what to look for. So here, this is pretty familiar. We have two matte finish spheres sitting under a spotlight. So we notice they are light on top, they have a strong terminator, and they're dark on the bottom. We are very familiar with this. Well, if I change one thing and make the left ball chrome, uh, the rendering is totally different. Now we have a dark top and a light bottom and a visible highlight, and that's actually the reflection of the lamp. So the old rules are completely thrown out for this situation. Okay, well, let me change one more thing. Now I will go from a stark spotlight to a large diffused light. So this would be more like a uh, studio softbox. All of a sudden, we have a very different result on our form shadows. We have essentially no terminator on the right. We also have very, very soft cast shadows. But the chrome sphere is really not all that affected. If we flip back and forth, you can see the chrome sphere doesn't really give you a good sense of form in either lighting scenario. It's just a mirror reflecting back the surrounding environment. And then there's middle ground where you can have something that's partially reflective but not completely reflective, like a cue ball. Okay, well, what if we change the environment? Right now we're indoors in sort of a lighting studio, but we want to take it outdoors. We'll leave the materials the same, but here we'll be out in the middle of the desert on a sunny day. And you can see this changes everything yet again. Now you have strong cast shadows and strong terminators like we're used to looking at from a lamp. But when you have a glossy object in this scenario, you can see a lot of details. Here you can see the horizon and the sky all reflected into that surface material. And then if we said, you know what, let's not have a sunny day. What if we had an overcast day instead? Well, now we have a very different result again. Here there's less prominent cast shadows, less prominent form shadows, and just a general lower contrast within each shape. So here we have a huge variety of appearances. Our compositions all look very different from one another, and yet the two objects never changed. The only thing that changed about them was it went from white to chrome, but really that's not a huge deal. But when we think about material, light, and the environment that this is all sitting in, we have a lot of control over the results. So we've seen the differences it makes, but what is the checklist? First, I like to start with what is the type of light, whether it's strong directional light or more diffused overcast light. Then there's the question of what is the local value? After that, I like to wonder, well, what is the surface texture? Is it bumpy? Is it irregular? Is it machined? The next question then is, does it have any reflectivity? Where is it on this spectrum between matte finish and pure chrome. If it is reflective, well then you have to also wonder what is the environment? Because remember, a glossy object is going to reflect everything that surrounds it into its own surface. And also we want to know how perfect is that gloss coat. Sometimes things are beat up, sometimes things are very clean. But the idea is with this relatively short list, we can either explore a piece of reference material and try and really figure out what it is we're looking at, or we can generate materials from scratch. Following down the list, we can create pretty realistic results based on our understanding of these principles. So in the next video, we're going to start working through these examples.